Hey everyone, welcome back to the shop. Today, I've got the fuselage for the Fulker sitting outside and we're gonna go ahead and cut a new cover for the canopy. All right, for those of you that have not used one in the past, that's a scroll saw and that scroll saw is older than me. Yeah, there's stuff out there older than me. Uh, that's, a, that's a Dremel um, model number 57. They were originally built back in 1957 was when it was patented. And I think they built them up till about uh, 1960, early 1962, 63. Um, so yeah, it is older than me. And it still works better than I ever could. Um, so what we're gonna do is I put in uh, an order uh, for, uh, from Balsa Incorporated out of uh, Iowa City, Iowa. Uh, and ordered up some more, um, sorry about that, uh, some more 30 second ply. Uh, and the way I normally order from them because it's very inexpensive if you get bigger sheets and you get it through for through them. They're not sponsored, I'm not sponsored by them. It's just a place I've been buying product from for years. Um, and instead of going to your local store and for a sheet about yay big, uh, that's probably about, I don't know, eight to $10, uh, you pay about four dollars and eighty-seven cents, but then of course you've got shipping. So, so what I usually do, uh, sorry, somebody's calling me. Uh, what I normally do is just make sure I've got a buying enough product to cover the cost. So I ended up just getting uh, some uh, six, some thirty-fourth, uh, eighth inch, and some quarter inch because I'm going to need some quarter inch uh, when it comes time to uh, put in the firewall. So I just went ahead and got enough. So I've got enough to last me quite some time so anyway I've already got it traced out uh, I've got this piece uh, for the cockpit goes in there and then the part that goes up over uh, the front on top of the cowling I decided that the piece that was cut out um, it, I think I could have used it but I figured hey you know what if you're gonna go ahead and cut out the part for the for the cockpit we'll just do the cowling piece too so I'm gonna get started off by cutting this piece out first uh, just to, just to get a little practice uh, before I get this piece cut out because I'm going to cut it out pretty much right up to the edge of that line and then the rest is just going to be sanding. So I will go ahead and get the other camera set up. I'll set this one up and set up my other camera just so you guys can get a, a view on how I go ahead and do it um, with just a little bit of music in the background. All right, I got the cowling part cut out uh, just as a test, just for me just to try to figure out how well I can do this and everything matched up very nice. Um, there's certain parts have to be cut off and we'll do that when it gets mounted. All right, the way that these things work is you take the little teeny blade out. That is the little teeny blade that does all the work. I'm gonna go ahead, put this in and then hook it back up on the inside to where the blade hooks onto right there. Put this up on top and pull it in. We're ready to cut.
and it is done just a little bit of sanding and we are ready to put it back on the plane it does not take too long i don't know how well you're gonna be able to see this the the, the cut is very clean and i cut it all the way down to the where the pencil line was and you can see where it ended the cut right here this little thing it just popped it off so i've got to sand this down but uh you just, you just take your time with the scroll saw and you got very little cleanup and it's going to come out looking very nicely all right about 10 minutes total time to get both of these things cut out that's the cockpit cover and there's up front on the cowling so let me go ahead and get the plane back in here and let's see how well they fit there is going to be sanding on both ends on the length and the width uh, you need to purposely leave this stuff long that makes because it's easier to sand stuff off because you can't sand stuff back on all right we are ready to glue this on unfortunately you won't be part of it what i'm going to use just to uh because i'm going to need a certain amount of working time uh, i wish i had some 15 minute epoxy uh, i don't i've got five and 30. i'm not going with five minute epoxy uh, because here's what i'm here's how i'm going to pretty much attach this on what i did was right now they're just thumbtacks and the reason why they're thumbtacks is i got everything lined up and properly trimmed out with just some regular uh building pins just little teeny pins little t pins right there those things um the reason why i am going to use thumbtacks is because the thumbtacks are going to hold everything into place so as soon as i put this down up on the center that's right on the center line so i'm going to go ahead and put these down the reason why i'm using thumbtacks simply enough we're putting tape across the top of it um, i've got three different size i don't have the thick stuff out but three different widths masking tape and i've got black some gaff tape uh it's what they use in movies they pretty much stick to everything and hold everything down uh, so what I'm going to try to do is see how much I can get done with just the masking tape. If I have to go ahead and throw a little bit of gaff tape down, I'm just going to have to be very careful um, when taking it off. It's the problem with gaff tape. It's uh, So what I'll probably do with the gaff tape, um, I'll go ahead and I'll do what I do with masking tape when I'm painting. I'll go ahead and because my shirt is a little bit on the fuzzy side, I'll go ahead and before the tape goes on that, I'll go ahead and stick it to my shirt just to pull some of the fibers, the lint fibers, um, off the off the cotton shirt. And uh, that way it'll give it a little bit less tooth, so to speak. Um, so it just makes it easier to come off. I do that when I paint uh, with the masking tape just to make sure I'm not going to be lifting up the paint that it's, that it's going over that makes sense and I hope it does so let me go ahead I'm gonna get the, I'm gonna get everything mixed up and as soon as it's all in place and and pretty much held down nice I'll bring you guys back just to show you what it looks like and then because it's one hour epoxy um, I and it's almost 5 p.m. it's gonna be uh, I'll probably just wait till uh, tomorrow morning uh, before I head off to work uh, to come down and inspect it and then of course you guys will be down there early in the morning just to see me pull everything off and just to see what it looks like all right as you can see it's all done and the gaff tape itself the gaff tape is a godsend if you guys got like a hundred bucks burning up a hole in your pocket buy some of this stuff gaff tape's really expensive it's not a hundred bucks a roll but sometimes it feels like it is um, you're not going to use it that often but when you do use it as stuff is awesome so let me go ahead and get the cannon up and then let's take you back and uh, show you what it looks like all right let's see how well you can see this just because of the light differential uh, we're all good along the outside edges on the back side it's all sitting down properly right on top and it does have epoxy all the way across each former across each stringer the best thing i can do is show you up here at the front as you can see there's no gaps at all all the way over the top and what i did was when i lined it up with uh with the thumbtacks i pulled out the front the rear i have not pulled this one out before i go this one will get lifted out because i don't want it stuck in there 
So uh, one less thing they have to try to battle to get out. So you got to figure right about now, 534, this stuff should be starting to firm up. Um, so normally with 30 minute epoxy, um, I don't usually try to touch it for at least two hours. Um, one hour epoxy, I don't touch it for about 12. So what I'll probably do is I'll come on down here. Eh, I'll probably just wait till tomorrow morning. Just run down here about, I don't know, nine o'clock, uh, in the morning and then, uh, test it out. So I will leave all of the cameras in the do goodies and say hi to the director. He's smiling. Um, so I, what I'll do is I'll leave everything down here tonight. Normally I bring it all upstairs. I'll leave it all down here. So I'll just come down here first thing in the morning and show you guys what everything looks like. 24 hours later. All right. Well, I've got the top of the cockpit put on and also the top of the cowling. Uh, so I'm going to give you a quick little run through just to show you what it looks like. There's still more work to be done. It's not finished. So it, to me, it looks a little on the messy side still, but like I said, there's still going to be work to be done. Uh, my goal was to try to get those top pieces put back on and they're both put on. So it's everything else is going to be me working up to the edges of it to make sure that the transitions are going to be nice when it comes time to cover it. That'll be done through balsa and also through, uh, through that stuff. It's, it's just a just spackling compound for drywall and uh, it works just fine uh, filling up the little teeny gaps because the shrinkage is almost nothing on it. So uh, by the time you get it covered, you won't even know it's there. So let me go ahead and grab the other camera and give you a little look-see. All right, as you can see, we have all good seam lines that we didn't have before. Down here on the bottom, everything is nice and tight. There's a couple little spots here where it lifted up just a little teeny bit and then went back down again. This is no big deal because even though uh, it looks like it's got a big bulge, it's just right down here. It's flat, smooth up here, and this little bit of sanding took care of that edge just right down there at the bottom. Now, coming up by the cowling, different story. This little piece was harder to put on than this whole section. Um, so once again, you got one chance to get it right, and you can see the sanding I had to do up here at the top. That's little spots where the, where the uh, thumbtacks went through. And of course, those were pulled as soon as I can get them out of there. But uh, this is just the part that the guy, uh, the original builder, had an issue with. <clears throat> and I came in and then just took some really thin strips of balsa just to put it in there. And once again, this still has to be readdressed here on this corner. So I'm, this is glued down solid. Um, so I'm just going to come up with strips of balsa just to put in here just to kind of get it sanded down so that it's a nice it, it's nice and smooth where it goes from the side to the top. Um, this is where I was saying it was looking ugly. Um, it, put it this way, it looks uglier than it feels right now, but I still have work to do up here on this part of the nose um, because I still wasn't happy with the way it looked and I still may end up cutting this whole little block out and replacing the whole block which the way things are going right now, that's probably what's gonna happen. Um, I came in through a little filler up here around the, the, the leading edge of this part, so it's nice and smooth now and it has gaps, but that will be filled with that little stuff with the pink top on it. So, from a little bird's eye view, it's actually looking pretty nice. We've got nice transition from the front to the middle section. And what I did right now is I left just a little bit of an overhang on the top uh, because if you slide it back, you can see that it's probably about a sixteenth of an inch long. But for right now, I just decided let's leave that the way it is and uh, with the hopes that I won't have to try to fill gaps. But right now, I'm just going to kind of leave this like it is um, just to progress forward with the side. So we'll just go ahead and we're going to call this the end of episode number five and I'll see you next time. I'm back down in the shop.